Community Medical Center's Pediatric Specialty Center gives the littlest patients access to care in various subspecialties, including pediatric adolescent gynecology. Doctors in this field treat and diagnose gynecologic problems in infants, children, and adolescents. Thank you so much to Dr. Angela Hernandez for joining me today. She is a pediatric adolescent gynecologist. What is pediatric gynecology? So pediatric gynecology is a subspecialty of obstetrics and gynecology. Um, in order to be trained in it, you do a two-year fellowship in specifying uh, between you know birth up until around the age 22, focusing on programs uh, or problems of newborns and young children as well as adolescents. In newborns, um, one of the most common things that I get asked about for my opinion would be newborns who are born with what we call ambiguous genitalia, meaning when you look at the private parts of that baby, it's really unclear if it's a female infant or a male infant, somewhere kind of in between. So I generally will work with other subspecialties like genetics, um, endocrinology, to kind of figure out um, you know, what is the genetic makeup of this child. Does this child have some sort of condition leading to excess hormones that have caused his or her external genitalia to develop um, improperly? And then spending time with the family and the patient and kind of working through how he or she will identify in the future and kind of what to do cosmetically about that area. So that's at a newborn age. And then what about toddler ages? For toddler ages, um, the issues I tend to see are kind of effects of hormones or the lack of hormones. Um, one of the common things in girls between maybe zero to three that I will frequently get called for would be, um, you know, if they're concerned that the labia um, are fused. Um, it's something called labial adhesions. It's just due to the fact that at a young age, these girls don't have the same estrogen that an adult woman would have. And the area gets you know, kind of stuck together. It's not an emergency, but a lot of people do look at it and they're like um, really alarmed by it. Um, kind of later on, kind of three to seven area, um, a lot of things I get um, called for would be topics on hygiene, um, discharge, odor, um, concern that their kid might be developing too fast. Maybe they're seeing breast development or pubic hair development sooner than they think is appropriate. I do frequently see preteens for just kind of development concerns. Maybe they feel um, their period should have come a little while ago. Where is it? What's going on? Am I delayed? Um, when the periods do come, things like painful periods, irregular periods, um, a need for birth control, or just kind of the need for birth control counseling. Why is it so important that adolescents in the Central Valley have access to uh, pediatric gynecology, pediatric and adolescent gynecology's you know, specialty and, and seeing a specialist like yourself? Teenagers in the Central Valley, um, although nationally the teenage birth rate has gone down. Um, you know, working over at CRMC and seeing the population on the obstetric side, we still do have quite a high teen pregnancy um, rate. I feel that by being in the Central Valley and kind of ex being exposed to the population early on, whether it's, you know, from when they were seven years old with a vaginal discharge um, or later on coming on just for contraception counseling, um, that we, I can make an impact in that sense. Final question here, what tips may you have for uh, parents who have, you know, daughters of young age um, or, or that preteen teenage, um, you know, what tips do you have for them? Yeah, well, it is definitely a challenging um, time. Um, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists recommend that um, women starting at the age of 13 to 15 visit a gynecologist, but there's really no need to wait that long. Um, you know, if there are some questions, if there's no really no reason to suffer through your period anymore, um, and if the parent doesn't feel comfortable talking about the subject or maybe doesn't feel like their pediatrician or their primary care doctor feels comfortable talking about it, you know, that's why I'm, I'm here to kind of help them out. Excellent. Thank yeah. you very much to Dr. Angela Hernandez Thank for you. your time. Thank you.